Hello. Happy Wednesday afternoon. We are back today and we're going to do a celestial sun and moon. Um, I guess maybe if uh, some of you kids may have already done this in school. I don't know. Caden, what grade was it? He left. Um, he'll be back. I don't remember, but he said he did. I know he did this with me. We did this um, when I would teach art at home to kids, and he said he also did it in school. So this may be something you have done before, but it's fun. We'll have a lot of fun uh, ideas of designs to do with it and bright colors. So we um, are going to have fun with this one. My name is Laurie, and I am owner at Pieces of My Art. And so we are online right now because we can't do anything in person. So hopefully soon this will be able to change, but I have absolutely fallen in love with doing online classes and doing Facebook Lives with you all. And I think it's because you guys make it so much fun. So everybody that's on here, when you hop on, say hello. If you're watching the replay, just say hello then as well. Love to see who um, is enjoying these videos, enjoying the time that they have to draw and do some painting. It's great therapy um, for your heart is what I always tell and other people tell me that too. It's just a good way to just de-stress, um, forget about all the other things that are going on around this and just kind of focus on creating. We will mix some different colors um, or I'll talk about that. If you have watercolor, that's what we're gonna use today. If you don't have watercolor, markers you work just as well. Pencils, crayons, so don't let not having watercolor keep you from doing these classes. So I'm gonna hop over to the other chair and we're gonna get started. All right, I gotta put this down. Hey Jennifer, hello. All right, there is my picture that I did. I don't know how many years ago, it's been a while. So, all right, let me. One other thing that you might want to grab if you can find something that's handy, even if it's just a plate or a bowl out of your kitchen, because I forgot to say this, is we're just using a paper plate, something just to make the circle. So that will help um, make a nice circle for you. And Kaden, there's my Sharpie. Okay. I want to see who's on here. I'm pulling this up on my computer so I can get comments. I see a bunch of eyes looking, so make sure you say hello. Why are we not showing? There we go. Taking a second for my computer to catch up. It's a little warmer out today, so hopefully we'll get outside to enjoy this weather after this is over. Caden's kind of doing catch up this week with schoolwork which I told them we were going to because next week's supposed to be back to our normal nice spring weather. So we're trying to get, this? yes, back up in the upper 60s and 70s for next week. So we're trying to get lots of school stuff done inside why it's not as, I mean, even though the sunshine, it's pretty. Yesterday was downright chilly. Okay, are we ready to start? If you're on here, be sure. Again, I just wanna hear from you so I know who's watching and who's um, drawing or doing art with us. This is not just for kids. So don't think that it can only, kids can only do this because you uh, grown ups can do it well, as well. It's just a lot of fun. Um, somebody the other day asked me if I did adult coloring books and I don't, um, but these could get just as detailed to do something like that if you wanted to do something like that. So I'm gonna get started with this one and show you how we will incorporate the sun and moon. And you guys, once you get some of your own ideas, you can just get creative with it. So the first thing I'm doing is putting my, I wish my paper was a little bit bigger, the one that I did originally was, or maybe if my circle was a little smaller. You want a little bit of room around your circle. Your daughter and I are following along. All right, Michelle, welcome. I'm glad you are. We're taking um, a plate or a bowl or something and just tracing whatever you got to make a circle. Um, one of the other classes, oh, the planet one that we did, I grabbed stuff out of my granddaughter's little play kitchen over here. She had all sorts of things to make circles with. So anyways, hey, Jessica, drawing so my daughter can paint it later. That's a good idea. 
I um, keep some of these that I don't get finished and I'm gonna save them for my granddaughter when she comes back. They have not been able to come over for a month and I miss them a lot. She turned five last week and I FaceTimed them earlier. They're kind of wild, kind of driving mom crazy a little bit. But anyways, I'm saving mine so she can paint them too because she loves to paint. Okay, so we got our circle here. Okay, so the so this celestial sun and moon is and from one circle, you're making a moon and a sun together. So the moon typically is the side of a space, and it can be either left side or right side, whatever works. And the sun is facing forward. So that makes it kind of fun. You do um, some of it's just I don't even know how to explain it till we draw it. But we're gonna so we're gonna draw the shape of the moon first and i want to make sure i have a nose so we're coming in somewhere from the top center of my circle and i'm going to curve in to the left and i'm going to curve back out to kind of end about right in the center of my circle so i'm just coming right into the center okay this is going to be my moon's nose and because the moon is the side of the face so from this point here, I'm gonna come sharp back around to point towards the left edge of my paper. And I'm coming in and I'm just making a little curve up like the side of our nose. This moon's got quite the pointed nose, but that's okay. All right, this is good also for just kind of getting a little bit of an idea of drawing faces too. All right, so trying to think what's going to be easiest next. Let's go ahead and do the lips. So we got the little top lip. So about in the middle of our nose, down here, we're going to make a little bit of a curve out. If you scoot over, your nose will be really long and pointed. It's just however you want it to be. All right, so I want to do my lips. So I want to do, let's make almost like a really flat number three here first. Okay, so I'm going to just go bump bump okay, so there's my lips turning out all right so now on the top my first bump where i started it i'm gonna come in and i'm gonna stop and then i'm gonna curve in from the bottom and come to that point and then i'm gonna put the line in the middle and there we have our moon lips okay did you grab something to make a circle for the cheek no. Oh, huh? You didn't. Okay. I tried to do it for the hat. Oh, I see what you're doing. Okay, so then down here, you're just going to go ahead and make another, right at, below the lip, you're going to go ahead and make another curve out. And there's our moon. We don't have the eyes on there and the cheek. Okay, so the moon, the moon is nighttime, so the moon's sleeping. So his eye is closed. So to make a closed eye, all you do is a curve down. You don't have to make the top, but you can because we have an eyelid and it gives you something to paint. So if you go ahead and do a curve up, even though that's not the eyeball, that's the eyelid. And then you can go ahead and put eyelashes on the bottom because the eye is closed, okay? So the eye is closed. The, the point, the key to this one is having different sections of blocks or areas that are enclosed that you can paint them. So that's um, why we would go ahead and close the eyelid or put a line at the top. Okay, so pink cheeks. At the end of our lip, we would do a circle because this will give us something else to paint a different color. So we got a big pink cheek that we'll, oh, we'll paint it pink right now. It's not painted. Okay, now before we do any more on this side, let's go over and do our sun. Now we want it to look like somewhat, it's almost like a Picasso style picture, we, but we want it to also connect to where if the sun's facing us, we're seeing the whole face of the sun, even though we got the moon eye is closed, okay? So let's start with the lips first. So we're just gonna make the lips, and it's almost like the sun and moon are kissing as well. So we're gonna make the lips right off of this one, the same way we did the moon lips, but we don't have the bump, 
the same, okay? So now we have a full mouth here. So now I'm gonna go ahead and put the cheek, like this side, over on this side. That one's a little bit smaller, but oh well, it'll be all right. You know what we could do for design purpose? Let's do this, I'm gonna do this. Since my aren't quite the same, this will just give me more area to color, more things to color. They're still not the same size. Oh well, we could go forever trying to match things up the same size. Okay, so now the nose. So we want the nose. So if we're looking straight on the nose, we want to bring our nose over this way. We're going to go ahead and make, let me see, so you can see. So we're gonna go ahead and go up and make a hook up just like that side, not quite as far out. We want it kind of centered pretty close over the lips. And I'm gonna color in, I'm gonna, from the tip of the moon nose, I'm gonna go in and curve up and come around and pull back in and that's like the nostril. So I'm gonna do a little bump in there and color that in. Okay, so the nose, before I finish the nose, I wanna get my eye on here so I get it in the right place. So if I think about the eye, so this eye is like right here at the end of the nose. So this eye right here is gonna start, you want it about the same height and up from the corner of the nose. So this is where the corner of my eye would be, where the, where the um, tear duct would be. So we're gonna go up, make the top of the eye, and then we're gonna go down and make the bottom of the eye. You can do a little bit of the eyelid. And then we can add eyelashes. I know you girls love to add eyelashes to your eye. And I just do a few on the bottom that we see. All right. Now we wanna go ahead and put did you have stuff on that computer that you need to save? Or were you off of it? Oh, I need to save it. Go just let Grandpa know that if you have something on there. Oh, he's doing the printer maybe. Okay, sorry. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and put the pupil in my eye, which is a circle, and we can paint that whatever color, and then I'm gonna do the, or not the pupil, the iris, and then I do the pupil which is the black circle inside. Okay, everybody doing good? Am I, everybody keeping up that are drawing? Do I need to wait? If you guys are ready to keep going, just give me a little thumbs up here and I'll let you know, or I'll keep going. Or let me know if you're ready for the next step, because I don't want to go too fast. You guys ready to move on? Okay, there we go. All right, so we're gonna go on. So now on, before I do too much around the eye, I'm gonna do a couple other things, we'll come back. So I'll just kind of jump around to some different things. So, so we're gonna put a little bit of hair on our sun. So first I like, let me show you my picture again so you can see it, okay. Hey, Lori. Oh, you showed up late, but you made it. Okay, so Lori, real quick. Here's our picture. This is what we're doing. Okay, so we started out. Um, we started out with, I just used a paper plate, and we drew the circle on. And then our moon is on one half, and we're looking at the side of our moon. So we do the nose and the lips from the side. The eye is closed, but we went ahead and drew the top of the eyelid, and then we did a circle for the cheek. Then we jumped over, did the lips following out from the moon lips, and the cheek and the sun is looking forward, so we see it in a different perspective. It's almost like this becomes the full sun, but it's like winking, and we got the nose, and that's where we're at. And I was just getting ready to add hair for flames did i freeze up because it shows my computer i don't know if we froze there we go okay has everybody got a good connection 
All right, so I'm getting ready to show you just fun, um, like flame looking things around the, the moon or the sun's head. It makes me think of like a 1920s flapper. So you're just gonna do different shapes going around. It makes me think of the hairstyle when they had their hair that was short and they curled it real tight and those pin curls up against their face. I want to say that was like 1920s or 30s maybe. Okay, so there's that here. Now I want flames all the way around the outside. Um, oh wow, you guys are fast. You caught up already. Okay, good deal. All right, so before I do the flames on the outside, my moon has a sleeping cap on because the moon is sleeping. So I'm going to do the brim. So I'm just going to make a line across the top of his head and I'm going to make the um, like a edging on it with just a fun whatever kind of shapes you want to do in this. These are, this one is going to be so much fun to paint. And like I said, you guys can do as many um, lines and patterns and stuff to have to color in when you're done with this as you want. All right. So we have the top. So remember, he's wearing a sleeping cap. So I'm going to make. Or a sleeping hat. It's kind of like a Santa stocking, I guess. It's going off the edge. But anyways, it's got a little a little ball on the end of it. Okay, so that's our moon sleeping, sleeping cap. All right. What else can we add? Okay, so back on the sun's eye really quick. I gave my, from my original one, I wanted to add some more color in here. So I made it look like the sun maybe had eyeshadow on. So I went ahead and drew up the side of her nose. So it goes, it's gonna curve in. And then I'm gonna follow the shape over top of the eye. And I'm gonna round down to the corner of my eye. And then I'm gonna take this, okay. So I just, I went up, I made the side of my nose going in and then I went ahead and let my nose come up and I curved around to form this area above the sun's eye that I put eyeshadow on. And I can show it to you again. It's like really pretty. You guys can do whatever colors you want, but mine's like at repeat. So over here are my cool colors. So if you kids, if any of you guys have learned in school what cool, cool colors are, what are they, Kaden? Do you remember your cool colors? that make you feel cool? Oh yeah, uh, uh, purple, green, and blue. Purple, green, and blue, that's right. And then hot colors that make you feel hot are? Uh, red, orange, and yellow. Yeah, so our sun is gonna be in our hot colors and our moon and our cool colors, but I also repeated a little bit of a cool color by doing her eyeshadow, and I did a warm color on the cheeks and the lips of my moon, so it kind of put it together. All right, so I have my sun or my moon sleeping cap. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do a line that's gonna divide the two skies, okay? So everything over here is gonna be my moon sky. And I'm doing it at the same place where my moon came from. And so then down here, over here's my moon. Everything over here is my sun sky. So now I gotta do all the sun rays and the flames or whatever coming out from my sun. So I'm just gonna do a whole bunch of these shapes. You can um, do them however you want. I do like flame looking shapes. Kind of running out of room over on the side, but you got yours? Mm-hmm. Good. You gonna start painting or you gonna go work on schoolwork and paint later? 
I'm going to turn it later. Okay. Caden's got schoolwork, and he didn't want to spend all day today doing it. We kind of had a long time yesterday. So he's going to go work on his school. But thanks for drawing with us, Caden. You're welcome. I'll see you. We'll see you tomorrow. What do we do? We're doing a draft tomorrow. All right. So I'm going to just keep making these flames. I don't really want them to get smaller, even though I'm on the side of my paper, so I may just have to go off the edge. But the more little sections I make, the more places I can paint in. All right, so once you get flames going down all around your sun, then over here on the moon, you can do stars. And you guys remember how I showed you how to do stars so we didn't have all the lines in the middle? So we do Vs, it's like five Vs, the letter V. So they can be going different directions, but if I show them to you all in one the same way, then it's easier for you. Your first V is going to be upside down. So it's the point of it is going to point towards the top of your paper, okay? Then your next V is going to come and point towards the left side of your paper. And then you're going to make a V going towards the right side of your paper. Then you're going to make a V going pointing towards the bottom left corner. You leave a little gap there. Then the next one would be going towards the bottom right corner. They do not have to be perfectly symmetrical, every V exactly the same. But those make really nice stars for you, and the more you do it, the better you're gonna get at it. You can do bigger ones, and you can do smaller ones. So you're gonna go point up, point left, point right, point bottom corner left, bottom right corner. Okay, so you can just go through and make as many as you want and different sizes. Also, when we do the painting, you could get a white crayon, which I grabbed one. And if you want, you could make some stars or just dots. If you want a bunch of stars to show, um, remember push hard, because you, you won't be able to see what I'm doing, but I'm pushing really hard and making all these white dots that would be stars far away in my sky, okay? Anywhere else, if you wanted to do patterns with your white crayon, you could. So let's say if we, I'm gonna put my Sharpie up. Let me do one more star up here and then I'm gonna show you some, or talk you through so you can see some other ideas you could do with your white crayon. Did anybody use Saran Wrap yesterday on your turtle? I I did after, um, after we were doing some school. I came in and I finished painting my turtle and I laid saran wrap on it for a little bit and I got the water wet again so it would kind of reactivate the paint and it was so cool. I'll show it to you in a minute. Okay, so I'm gonna make his, his little nightcap look like maybe it has like plaid. Um, so I'm just gonna make lines going one direction or checks, I guess. And then I'm going to make lines going the other direction. It just gives a little bit of a pattern to his nightcap here. To our sleepy moon. Okay, I'm trying to think if there's anything on the... I mean, you could add white lines if you wanted to in your... I'm going to add some in my... my flames off the sun. Just going in and adding, I'm putting like a line right in the middle of this. Okay. I think, I don't know what else, if you have any other ideas of things you could add to this, you go for it. You guys, this is where you guys get to be really creative, but this is where I'm going to stop. 
So I'm gonna show you, because this is my favorite part is painting. Um, so I'm gonna show you just different colors. And I again, I use mixing colors. So that means I don't have traditionally red or I don't have green. So those colors I would mix to make. But um, I have very um, bold colors. So when you do watercolor, you wanna really get your paint wet. I wanna make sure I can, you guys can see what I'm doing here. You wanna really um, make sure you get your paint in the, the cakes really, really wet not meaning tons of water, but really stir that water in there so the paint starts getting soft and thicker and thicker in that water because that will give you bolder colors. So this is just my straight red orange. Now this one, we've been doing a lot of where we add water first and then paint. This one I just, I'm gonna paint directly on my paper without adding water first. This makes it really, really, um, like I said, a really bold, and I think I need a smaller brush. So sometimes we use smaller brushes, especially when we want to get into tighter places. So this is just a smaller round brush. The one I was using first is the one that came with my paints, but this one is just a smaller one. You would paint, you just want to paint, there's a hair on there or something, paint with the very tip of your brush. You don't have to push hard. You just want to make sure your paint brush has paint on it so you reload it in the paint frequently. And I'm just going to use a smaller brush to just make a good outline around all of my flames here and then I can use the bigger brush to paint it in faster. So you can use one for the smaller details of outlining and stuff. And then take your bigger brush to do your bigger areas. And then it doesn't quite take as long. Okay, I don't wanna get where I'm just painting for a long time in one area. I just wanna kinda of give you the idea. So then that way we don't have to be on here too long. See, I could use my bigger brush now to fill in all this area faster. All right, so I'm not, I'm not gonna go all the way down around my flames yet. Plus, it's always good to let different areas dry. But it would also, I'm gonna tell you, it would look cool. Let's try this. Have you seen my science notebook anywhere? I don't know what your science notebook looks like. It looks like... I don't know. I see a bunch of stuff down at the bottom under yes, the desk. I okay, I don't know, sweetie. Um, it has my okay, well, I haven't seen it, so you're going to have to look for it. Okay, so this is what I think would look cool. I think it would look cool. I'm going to do my yellow and my flames. And I think it would look kind of cool if you let the, the orange soak into the edges of the yellow on these flames. I think it would make it, so I'm gonna let my paint touch. Now, if you really want it to soak in better, see I can take and put some more orange on the edge of that. And since it's really wet, that orange is gonna bleed into my yellow and kind of do what you would think that fire would do anyways. Let me show you again. I'll show you a little better illustration. I'm gonna show you on this great big flame. So I'm gonna paint this white first. Now remember, oh yeah, I did put white chalk in there, or not chalk, but crayon. It's not really showing on that one. Okay, so see how the it pulled the orange in there? So I painted all that. Now I'm gonna just streak some yellow through here. So I think on the flames it would look cool to let the stuff run together, but that's up to you. Okay, I'll just do a couple more of these. Not 
worrying about whether I get into the orange because I want that orange now. Whoops. To go into my yellow on the edges. Okay. Once that dries, so right now I totally, the paint's over top of those crayon marks. When it dries, you'll be able to see them better. Okay, so I'm gonna let that dry a little bit because I don't want it to all smush together. All right, so like the, this was always my favorite part when I was, I told you my coloring book story when I was little. So I wanna paint my, my lips to my son. And so her lips are gonna be a really hot pink. And I did a different shade of pink for my moon's lips. So, let me get my white. Do you guys ever use white watercolors? We don't use them very often, do we? But I want a lighter pink for my moon, which will make it a little bit of a cooler, but still warm. A little cooler pink, but it's still a warm pink, okay? Not too much water on my brush. Now, my hot pink was wet, so now it's kind of getting into my moon lips a little bit. All right. So let's do, I'm gonna come up. So remember I said that I did my eyelid, just kind of watercolored it um, with cool colors to kind of give a little bit of a cool color on the sun side. So I give her pretty blue eyeshadow. I got it wet because I like to watch these colors do their thing. You guys should have so much experience now with all the paints and how they make such cool patterns and shapes. I hope you're having fun with the paint part of this. I'm gonna do just a little yellow down in this corner so it'll turn green. A little bit of a blue green. So there is definitely my cool eye shadow going on. I'm gonna do one more thing here. Too much water in that paint. Okay, I want that and I want a little bit of this in it. It's just way too wet. to get my eye eyelid a little darker blue. Okay, don't forget to paint her pupil in that you want whatever color you want the pupil. You can match your own eyes or you can make it whatever you want. My eyes are more green than they are blue, but this eye is blue. Okay, so there is my eyelid that I'm gonna let dry. So I definitely don't want that to run into her face. Okay, so on the other side, this eyelid can be, so I did kind of a lavender color because I, um, but you can do, you can make it more of a hotter color, just whatever you want on the other side. But I'm gonna just make this kind of a light purple here. Sometimes your paints can get so thick that you cover up your Sharpie marks. When it dries, you can come back and add more color to it. All right, while we're in the pink here, and some white, which I just got my white all messy. I'm gonna make this cheek pink. Oh, I've got something on my brush. This cheek pink on this side. So see how I'm doing a few warm colors over here. But then on the other side, we'll 
the rest of my moon. It's going to be all cool colors. Okay, that's supposed to be a darker pink. Whoops, I just got out on the moon face. That's okay. That's supposed to be a darker pink on that. All right, so let's go ahead and do the cheek on the other side. So she's the sun, she's hot. So I'm gonna do a really hot orange. I'm gonna add a little pink into it so it's maybe more of a red orange for this cheek. She's got red cheeks. And it seems like every time I'm out here, the neighbors mow in the grass. It's different neighbors, but I feel like maybe, maybe they're, everybody's just bored, and so they're just mowing their grass all the time. I feel like it is. Seems like there's always somebody mowing. All right. So I'm going to come up. And I'm going to grab my bigger brush. So I'm going to paint my hat. So I want my hat. So my sky is going to be more purples and pinks. I'm going to let that kind of be different colors. So I'm doing my hat a navy blue. Again, you guys can pick your own colors that you want. Did you find it, Kaden? This is where you'll be able to see my, see in that coal, you can see all my crayon marks that I made patterns on my hat. I don't know why my sun, my flames didn't show up very well. Maybe I didn't push hard enough. It's always important to push hard when you're doing crayons. So that gives a very cool pattern on that. All right, so now I'm gonna do my moon face. If you guys are on here and you haven't said hello and you're doing art with us or just watching, love to hear from me, just say hello. Also, if you guys know somebody else that might enjoy these classes, if you share it, that's awesome. I do this every week day at 1 o'clock. I've um, been doing this, almost finishing up. I think this will be finishing up our fourth week. That's hard for me, me to believe. This is something I've always known. I need to do live. I need to do live videos. Um, and I always use the excuse that I don't have good Wi-Fi out in the studio, which I don't, but... Um, so I just started doing it in the dining room in the house and this has just been so much fun and I get such good positive feedback from you guys so it encourages me to keep it up since I know it's something you guys are enjoying. So again say hello if you're just on here and I haven't heard from you yet. Kind of like to paint every square inch of our paper. It just something about it just feels like it's completed when our whole paper's painted in. I still don't remember what we were going to paint Friday. I know tomorrow's the giraffe. I cannot remember what it was. Does anybody remember what Friday's is? I'd have to look. I don't remember. 
what it is. Okay, on my stars, on my, in my sky, I didn't paint them. I just left them white. So remember how we can get your paper wet? So you would want to get it wet right up to your shapes here. So your lines, but not over your lines because everywhere there's water on your paper is where the paint's going to go. And this is why I like doing this is because I like the, the paints to just kind of do their thing. So I get water on there, I spread it around. I don't want any really deep puddles. Oh, bear and bees, yes. I have a, thank you, Lori. I have a super cute bear and bees that we're going to do. It's like the head of a bear. Um, it's going to be pretty simple, not, not like a realistic looking bear, but he's so cute. And I want to do little bees and stuff flying around his head. So that's what, thank you, Lori. So that's what we're going to do on Friday. It's another one that I think any age would enjoy. Okay, so I got my paint wet, or my paper wet. Now I'm gonna just add paint. And it just spreads around, and it, some of it's darker than others. If you wanna put a little um, of the pink colors in it and let it blend in, it'll make different shades of purple. This makes a very cool looking sky. If you want it really, really dark, you can add a little black in there too. And it'll make darker blues in that as it mixes in. It may look black in some places too, but it makes for a nice dark sky. And, or a dark purple. I want to push my paint right up to my stars so it's painted right around it. Okay, so this is also another one of those that would be fun. You could sprinkle salt on this part of the sky if you wanted to, or all of it. Because we've already learned that made some neat textures. And here, I'll show you my turtle. Caden, you want to hand me my turtle picture for me real quick? I want to show you how after I took the plastic wrap off of my turtle yesterday, it was like really cool. It's right up on the shelf there. You think that's one of the best ones? I think you, oh, and Lori said that her girls thought your turtle looked really good too. All right, so there is my turtle. So can you see how the the plastic wrap made some different lines and it just made some different textures. And to me, it kind of gives the look of the way that water casts different shadows as it move as the movement of the water. But it was just fun. So plastic wrap makes a really cool texture to it. So I don't know if you can see that very well. Let me scoot it a little closer. Just showing you how that ended up being. Okay. All right, so there's a lot of fun textures you can do with your watercolors. For sure. There's other ones we can do rubbing alcohol sometime, um, paper towels even. Paper towels will absorb a lot, so, but there's just different things we can do. I'm trying to think of some other ones. So you see where my crayons are kind of leaving a little bit of a white spot. As it dries, they'll show better. I think I get too much paint on it and then they don't really show up. All right, so there's sky for that. You can see my other picture here really well. So as things dry, you can add. Mom, what's a good heart rate for workouting? For, for what age? For me? Um, if I'm really out of shape, my heart rate would probably be like 180. 180. No, that's really, that's high. I think if I remember, is it per what, 10 seconds or in a minute? How many beats per minute or how many, what's their criteria? In 10 seconds or in a minute? I don't remember. Resting heart rate might be between 
Well, we can check your heart rate. No, wait. Ask Siri. So. For working out, 160 beats per minute. No, that not per minute. Yeah. Minutes. For 20. 20 well, you don't figure it per 20. You pick. It's usually beats per minute. How many beats per minute? I'm going to guess maybe one. For you, since you're one young, beat would be. A minute? No, it'd be like 160 or 150 for you. If I remember right, I used to do. Remember when I did um, nine rounds? Yeah. And I had a heart monitor that we got. And I want to say when mine got up to be, but you got to realize I'm a lot older than you and not near in as good a shape. But I want to say when mine got up to be about 170 beats per minute, that was like too high. That was like you needed to slow down a little bit, maybe to get it about 160, but I can't remember for sure. We'll have to. 170? So I'd be like 180. No, yours would be lower because you're healthier and younger or whatever. Do you want a low heart rate? You want it high enough that you're pumping, that you're working hard, but you don't want it so high that you have a heart attack. So 160? I don't know. I'm just telling you for me. Who are the, what's the question? Um, heart rate. For who? Well, I'm about done. I can come help you. We'll look at it. But anyways. The higher your heart rate is, usually is the, you're not in as good a shape. If it's, I mean, you want your heart rate to be elevated when you're exercising. So 150 for me. I don't know. I don't know if that's right for you. Don't guess at stuff. Then you have to redo it. Dude. Okay. Anybody have any input on that conversation? Everybody's painting. They're like, what are you talking about? They did? No. Everybody just hears our conversations. Your heart rate, I don't know. Does grandpa's, um, grandpa has a blood pressure cuff over there. Where? Does it check on his table, on his desk? Does that check your heart rate too? What? Well, you've already been jumping around. So your heart rate's going to be up higher than a resting heart rate. I know there's a, a, a number when you're working out, you want to work for your heart rate getting up too. That way you start kicking in. For me, it would be burning calories, but you don't need, you are always burning calories. Like nobody's business. I have to follow the directions. So Cade's gonna go take his own blood pressure. The things we learn when we are at home. I have enjoyed this time more than probably most times that I have had with kids being at home for schooling. Yeah, it squeezes you. Are you sitting down? Anyways, what time we get? 1.49. We're not doing too bad. I'll paint for a few more minutes and then I'll let you guys go. Thanks for joining again. Glad you guys could come and enjoy this. Make sure you could, again, you can share with whoever later. Tell them they can watch it whenever it works for them. So I'm gradually getting these uploaded on YouTube. I don't really, I have a YouTube channel. Two subscribers. Um... I'm not sure who the first one is. Caden was the other one. I don't know if it's my daughter. Yes, Ariana. Is it Ariana? Okay. But anyway, I am working on getting all my 
videos like these uploaded. So I'll have a place to, to have them and then make them public on YouTube for other people. Then as I work into my other ideas, then I'll also have other kinds of videos available too. But you gotta start somewhere. I'm so glad that I, this time made me get busy doing this. What did it say? You need Caitlin here. She loves to play doctor. She would have taken your blood pressure. She would have given you a shot too. All right. What else? So um, on this, I feel like the the um, sun. Whoops. The sun needs contrasting colors for. Why that. are the numbers going down? Because you took it off. Is it not elevated? I don't know. I'd have to look at it, Caden. I can't answer you from here. Then it has to be straight. You have to put it on a certain spot on your arm. Yeah, I read the direction. Okay, well hang on and I can explain to you what it's all about. I should go run around the yard. Well, let's see what it is with your semi-resting blood pressure and pulse and then you can go run out with dog and then we'll test it again, okay? Okay. One of our science experiences. Yes. All right. Um, I mean, a boy to a mutated person. A what? A mutated. a mutated person. Okay, whatever. All right, so I'm going to finish this little flame right here. So all I have, would have left is to finish this guy up here and then my little trim on my hat and whatever color my little, the little dingle ball would be for my hat. So anyways, you guys finish this up. Be sure and share your pictures. I love seeing them. I love seeing what everybody's doing and uh, all the creativity. JC and Kinsey, you guys are so creative with your artwork and I just love seeing what you're doing. So anybody else, the rest of you that at the beginning said they were doing um, this, Michelle, make sure you share. Even if, you know, just whoever, share your pictures, you can just add them in the comments. Jessica, I'd love to see what you even drew up so she can paint it or show it to me later. Excuse me, after she paints. Jennifer, did you paint or did you draw and paint with us, Jennifer? You said hello. First one, say hello. Maybe you're just watching. But anyways, you guys have a great Wednesday afternoon. Get out, get some sunshine. And I will see you tomorrow at 1 o'clock and we'll do a giraffe tomorrow.